lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Once again, I'm standing here ashamed. My sinful ways have called. Just so much pain Doing things you told me not to do Lord, I need a healing touch from you So I asked the Lord if he would change my heart A touch from you would provide
Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name, Father. We just like to take time out. Hallelujah. To say, praise the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We like to give honor to Him. We like to give honor to our uh, luxurious producer, Kenny Robinson, and we like to say, Welcome to For His Glory. Hallelujah. Give God some praise tonight. We just thank God for who He is. We thank God for what He's doing and what He's about to do. To God be the glory. I'm so glad to be here, and I'm always honored to be able to bring forth the word of the Lord to the children of God, the people of God, and uh, to those that may not yet have been uh, tuning in, and to those who have not maybe made up their choices or made the intelligent decision to come in and know the Lord for themselves. Tonight, I... I'll be ministering and dealing with uh, coming from the book of Jonah, the first chapter. I looked over this a couple of weeks ago, and this is not the first time that God has had me minister from the book of Jonah. Uh, But I was looking through it a couple of weeks ago, and uh, some more things began to, to jump out at me as I looked through it, as I began to read through it. And um, it seems like one of those things that I really haven't been able to really get away from when it came to coming on tonight to minister the, the word of the Lord, to break the word of the bread of truth, the bread of life with everybody. So uh, before I get started, I'd like to have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. We come thanking you for life, health, and strength, and we thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing. We thank you for this opportunity and this platform to be able to come forth and spread your word, spread your gospel, is still reaching so many that are still lost. This, this word is still going forth, building up those that have been torn down. This word is still going forth, healing those that are sick, those that may be depressed, causing some to once more and again have joy where they had no more joy or hope is given back to some that has no or had no more hope. So, Father, as we come to you right now, humbly but yet boldly to the throne of grace, dominion, majesty, and power, we come humbly but yet boldly, Lord God, because through your son, Jesus Christ, you've given us the privilege and the right to boldly come to seek your face that we may have answers, that we may have all our needs met according to your riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus, to break those things that may be having us bound. We just give you praise because there's nothing too hard for you and there's nothing too, there's nothing impossible with you. We thank you, Lord God, that you're blessing and that you're moving by your spirit even as we're now yet talking. Because your word said that while we're yet praying, you'll be answering. So, Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask that you touch every heart, every mind, every soul, every spirit, every heart out there that's under the sound of my voice this night. For truly, this is a remarkable night. For somebody, it's going to be a notable night, a night to remember. So, Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you open hearts, open minds. We bind the hand of the enemy, the enemy that would try to come in and try to snatch that word immediately when that seed has been sown. We bind you on earth that our Father, which is in heaven, will bind you in heaven. And we loose ministering angels and angels to do warfare over this word so that the word will find on, fall on good ground and that the word will produce and that the word will set many that are bound free 
yet Jesus will still get the glory because it's for his glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Coming from the book of Jonah. Coming from the book of Jonah. We're looking at Jonah, the first chapter. And I'm thinking, thinking, I'm I'm thinking, I'm looking, I'm thinking, I'm looking, I might be starting, I might be working with just the first five verses. I don't know because there's, there's been a whole lot that God has been uh um, been like unraveling, unfolding for me in this. So let's uh, buckle your seat belt and let's take this fantastic voyage right quick. Looking at the first verse with John of the first chapter, first verse, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amathi, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Let's look at that first verse. It's a very key, it's a very key, it's a very key verse. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, unto Jonah. It didn't come to nobody else but to Jonah. That word came directly to Jonah. I'm reminded a few weeks ago, God had me ministering concerning Hosea, and that's pretty much the same thing. I said, it's very possible that his mate may not even have heard the call that God had put out there, but we know that Hosea heard that word. In this case, it's saying that Jonah heard the word. That word, when God speaks that word, that word comes directly to you. It don't bypass you. It don't skip you. It don't go to mom. It don't go to dad. It don't go to your brother or your sister. It goes to you. You are the recipient of that word. You heard God say what God said. So because you heard what God said, you're now responsible for what you heard because God knows the intent of your heart. He knows your heart. He knows that everything is functioning. He knows your mind is functioning. He knows that your mind is comprehending every word that he said, whether whether you speak Chinese, whether you speak uh, Portuguese, whether you speak English, whether you speak uh, 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 Espanol, he he knows what language you speak, so he comes down on your level and he breaks it down for you. He makes it plain. He don't stutter when he speaks. He makes it plain and makes the call. The question is, are you going to answer the call? You you know you heard what God said. He gave him direct, direct instruction. In the seventh verse, he told him, arise. In other words, get up. <laughs> Come from your place of comfort. Come from your comfort zone. Come from the place that you want to be. Get up. Can I tell you this much? I'm going to tell you this much anyway. He's not asking you. When God gives the call, he's not asking you. Because he is Lord of lords and he is king of kings above all other kings, he's not asking you. I can't get this. I can't get this. I can't make this any any plainer. He's not asking you. We must remember. He is the potter. We are the clay. When he makes the call, he's not asking you, do you want to go? He's not asking you, would you like to go? He's not asking you, uh, do you have somewhere in your calendar time for me to uh, send you to Nineveh? Do you have enough time uh, away from 
cares of this world to go and do what I called you to do? Do you have enough time to, to get away from your from your loved ones, your family, and go to your neighbor across the street or across the road? Or do you have an, enough time? Can you? He, he's not asking you uh, what what is your work schedule like, so I can see you to this place or that place. He says, "Arise." That reminds me of Jesus when he went to the 12 disciples. I touched on that a little bit the other week, too, when we were talking about people thinking about how, you know, the, the ministers and things like that supposed to be broke all the time. Now, the devil is a lie. <laughs> God will meet. He's going to meet the needs of his people according to his riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. But when Jesus approached his 12 disciples, he looked at them and he said, come follow me. And whatever they was doing, because he is Lord and Lord and Master of all things, they dropped it, and they followed him. This message is out there. this message right here is going out there because there is some Jonas out there that God is calling and has called. He has called, and he's been calling for a while now. But some don't want to adhere to the call. I've been there before. I've always wanted to answer the call. When, well, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't say always. <laughs> I can't because when because see sometimes there's times he's gonna call you more times than once. When you get in this thing, there's times he's gonna elevate you, and there, and, and when he elevates you, sometimes the enemy tries to make you feel like you're not capable of going into that next place that God is calling you into. So you have a tendency to want to try to run from that next place that God is calling you into. Don't run because you, even even if you already say, see, that's where we get messed up. Sometimes even because we have a relationship with God and he's calling us to that next place, we still have a tendency to want to play like Jonah and run away from the call. We want to stay in that comfort zone. But God is calling you to a place where you can arise, and then he said, go. Not only did he just say, you know, I want you to go to a particular place where you go wander around, where you go search, where you go hunt, where you go look. No, he told him exactly where to go. He said, go to Nineveh. And I'm finding out there's a lot of Jonas out there that knows the direction that God is sending them in, but because they have not yet fully submitted to God, because they have not yet found out or learned the ways of God, they have not found out that God does love you, but God yet still chasing those whom he loves. Sometimes I wonder, do, yet, do they even understand the definition of what chasing means? Chasing means God's strength, God's discipline, God whoops tail. God will, now see now I see I'm talking now and some people I might they may have gotten to turn me off already because they don't believe in whooping whooping and spanking and, 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 and bringing correction even to their own children. There's some there's some right now all they want to do is give a time out, but that's not that's not biblical. See, I'm getting myself somewhere in trouble now, but that's okay. I serve a good God. There's some that don't want to don't want to chase them. And let me warn for those who don't want to chasten your children while they're yet growing up. He said, teach them the way. So that when they get old they won't depart away from it. See, if you don't chasten them now, they'll get to a place in life that they won't understand what chastening means or what chastening is because they never had it in their life. And then they come into a place where they know God and have a relationship with God, but then they go the other way, and then God begins to chasing them. They don't understand it. They don't have no comprehension of what's really going on or what's taking place because they hadn't been trained in that area in the time that they were growing up. God, how did I get in there? But I'm there now. God gave him direct instructions, go to Nineveh. When God sins and when God calls, you know exactly where you're supposed to go. You know when you're supposed to go. Sometimes you might go prematurely, or sometimes you might go late. But you, but the best bet is you better go. 
shout. That was strong when I said better, because some people don't like to hear that. You, who you think you're talking to? You don't tell me what to do. I'm sitting and sitting and sitting. So I'm sitting. I'm going to tell you right now, pride. We mess up. We fall most of the time for the simple, for the simple reason of pride. But the Bible tells us a haughty look and a prideful heart and go up before a destruction and or a fall. Let me read on because he told him, he said, go to Nineveh. Listen, he told him to go to Nineveh. Then he gives him a reasoning. Can I tell y'all something? God don't have to reason with us about nothing. <laughs> he should have just told him, go to Nineveh, and that should have been enough. See, a lot of this stuff I'm talking about right now is just coming straight down off the pipe. Straight down off the pipe. I ain't even studied that part. I ain't even thought about that part. But listen, he, he was supposed to just say go, and he's supposed to just say yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes, ma'am. There wasn't supposed to be no debate. Because when God speaks, he's not trying to debate nothing with you. You can come up with God. I don't feel good. He'll say, I heal you. You say, well, I don't have enough money. He said, like, I, I got that too. Whatever, whatever Moses said, well, God, you know, I, I have this speech impediment. I, I, I stutter when I, he said, I've seen your brother. He'll speak for you. And later on, throughout the, 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 the book of Exodus and everything, the more we start looking at that book, the more we start reading that book, we start seeing the less Aaron spoke and the more Moses spoke. God just wants you to be yielded. He just wants you to go. He said, go to Nineveh. And then he gave him a reason as to why he wanted him to go. He said, their wickedness has come up before me. I don't know why people mean that they can, can, can convince a man. See, I've had some of them try to convince me that everything was all right, everything was chummy, I ain't doing this and I ain't doing that, and, 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 and I'm like, look, you don't have to convince me. Yes, call me into the office of an apostle. By me being in the office of an apostle, I operate in all five areas of the of of the ministry, the fivefold, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. So therefore, yeah, in that time that I go into the office of a prophet, I see. I see what God had me to see. I hear what God had me to hear. But the thing about it is, he only allows me to see but so much. He only allows me to hear but so much. But what people keep failing to realize is that God is omnipresent, and God sees it all. So while you're trying to pull the wool over the prophet eyes, God still seeing what you're trying to hide. He said, their wickedness has come up for me. That's why I want you to go. Let me say it like this. I want you to go. And the reason why I want you to go is because that's your assignment, and I'm assigning you to go because they can relate to you. I know your life. I know what you've been through. I know your ups. I know your downs. I know your disappointment. I know your struggle, and I brought you through them all, so now I need you to go to this place called Nineveh or wherever else I need you to go. I need you to go. This is the Lord talking. I need you to go. I don't need your sister to go. I don't need your best friend to go. I need you to go. And sometimes we mess up and want to take somebody else with us, and God ain't said nothing to them. Oh, my God. So when God ain't said nothing to them, and he ain't even told you to go get them, you carrying around dead weight. You're going to be distracted and most. More, more, more times than 10, you ain't even going to go where God said to go. Oh, my God. God gave him an assignment to go reach some people. Listen to me. The people's wickedness had come up to God. 
their wickedness had come before God. God was ready to cut them off. Oh, God cut people off? Yes, he do. But I thought you said God love it. Yes, he do. But he cannot. He cannot. He cannot. He cannot. He cannot accept sin. He cannot accept wickedness. And he warns. There's always a warning before destruction. So God wants you to get up and go to a wicked place and warn somebody that destruction is about to come. Now Ezekiel say if you don't if you don't warn the wicked and the wicked man die in his sins, then I'm gonna I'm gonna require the wicked man's sin, I'm gonna require his blood upon your hand. So I need you to go. I don't want to wipe them out. I don't want to blot them, blot them out. I don't want, it's not my will that any man should perish, but I want all men to come unto repentance. So I'm sending you, Jonah. I can put some other names in that block where I said Jonah. In that little empty blank right there where it said Jonah, I, I could put some more names right there. But but good God, I, I want you, Jonah. There are some souls. Weighing in the balance. The enemy got his hand on him. He want to take him to the belly of hell. But you're dealing with your pride. Good God. Are you letting your that spirit of pride deal with you? He said, get up. Because that wickedness has come before me. Let's look at the first, the third verse. Jonah. In the third verse, the Bible says, Jonah rose up. Oh, God. Now, I just saw something right there. Mm, mm, mm. In the third verse, it says, but Jonah rose up. <laughs> How many of y'all thinking you all right with God because you did part of what God said do? <laughs> In the first verse, Jesus, I mean, God, I mean, second verse, God told Jonah, arise and go to Nineveh. Third verse, it says, but Jonah rose up, okay? He did arise. He did do what God told him to do in the first part. You'll be surprised how many people running around here, here thinking they still okay with God because they did the first part right. They did that part, they did get up like God told them to do. And then they think they still going to be blessed. They still going to have, God, have God's mercy. They still going to have God's uh, blessing. They still going to have God's favor. They still going to have, oh, my God. They still think they're going to have God's finances. They think God will bless their, their, their relationship. But you only did one part of what God told you to do. So if you don't do it all, you still walking in disobedience. Oh my God. You still walking in disobedience. He said, third verse, but Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. What in the world do you think you gonna go by running out of the presence of the Lord? He's omnipresent. Wherever you go, he's there too. David said, If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. We'll see a little bit more of that if I, if I, if I, my nah, God, I don't even know if I'm going to, like I said, this might be a two-part, three-part, four-part type series right here, but, but it's God. He said, he flew from the presence of the Lord. Flee. He went from the presence of the Lord. Some people feel like, you know what? I'm still with God. I'm still with God. I'm not doing what God told me to do, but I'm still with God. I'm still, I'm still with God. Can, can I tell y'all something, please? Please let me tell you something. Let me, let me help somebody. Let me do it like this. Let me break it down like this right here. But if you're not running to the things of God, you running away from God. If God tell you to go right and you go left. You're not running with God. You're running away from God. 
and you about to mess not only you up, but you about to mess everybody else up that comes in contact with you because of your disobedience. I don't know. I get in stuff like that, but I'm in, I'm in it now. As we go on, as we go on, all this stuff, all this stuff start unfolding. He he ran from the presence of the Lord. The next place it says that he went down to Joppa. Ah, let me back up right there. The Bible say Jonah went down. Let me let me do it like uh like Melvin used to do it from the temptation. The Bible said he went down. He went down to Joppa. Anytime you run from the presence of the Lord, you are going down and you're sinking like quicksand because you're not going in the direction of the current set. The current, the current, not the current, but the current is going one way and you're going against the current and you're going down. And you're figuring, are you trying to wonder out why, why everything is going wrong? Why I can't get this to work? Or uh, if it's working, as soon as it works just a little bit, it starts falling back apart again. It's not, it's not holding. It's, why is it that it's, it's, it's like it don't even have any substance no more? Because you're going against the will of God for your life. You're going down. You're not, you're not coming up. You not you not coming up. Let me say this to you too. God God dropped this on me a few minutes before I even started. If you are going in the opposite direction of God, there is a possibility. There is a strong possibility that while you're still going in the wrong direction of God, some things might unlock for you from time to time. Some things might. Just fall in your lap from time to time to make you feel like, yeah, God is still with me. Thought my back was against the wall and this happened. I I thought I wasn't gonna make it, but then all of a sudden that happened. No, you got to realize that your enemy, who is Satan, is crafty. He is cunning. The Bible, Jesus even told it like this. He said. If your father being evil, listen to what I'm saying. If your father being evil know how to give good gifts, he said, how much more does your heavenly father know how to give the Holy Ghost to those who ask him? My point is in this. Evil men will give good gifts. The enemy will use evil men to give good gifts to keep you out of the position that God has called you into. You will think it's God. It will feel like it's God, but it won't be God. And what the devil is trying to do to rob, steal, kill, and to destroy you. He don't want you to get back in the place where God wants you to be. He don't want you to get back in the place of where God is so that you can go forth and handle your assignment. But God always got a plan. He went down to Joppa. And the Bible says he found a ship. He found the ship. He found the ship. He found the ship, y'all. A ship. He didn't find no little boat. He found a ship. And some of y'all, y'all like to find a yacht. And it looks real good. It looks real promising. It, the enemy not gonna paint you no regular picture to make it look like uh to make it look like that's not where you wanna be. He found the ship. That ship looked good. That, that ship looked promising. How you know, Brian? Because if it hadn't looked promising, if it didn't, if, if it hadn't looked good, Jonah wouldn't have jumped on it. You wouldn't have either. He found a ship, a ship that was going to Tarshish. Surprise! How many people? There are people they know they're supposed to be with certain people, but they go to another person because God said go to this person. No, nah, I want to go to this person. 
the enemy just dress it up, make it look good. And in some cases, in some cases, people people lower their standards to try to, to try to get with something else just to keep from doing what God called them to do. Good God help me, Jesus. He lowered, he went to, he went down, he found the ship, and it was going to Tarsha. So watch this. So he paid the fare thereof. And then it says, and went down into it. There he is. He going down again. But let me back up a little bit. Let me back up a little bit. I, I like I like this word right here because you can, I, I, the Lord just keeps giving me stuff and, 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 and I'm able to, to dissect some stuff. He said, listen, he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid he paid the fare. Listen, anytime you walk away from the things of God, anytime you walk away from your assignment, anytime you go in the opposite direction of where God told you to go, you're going to pay. It's going to cost you. One of the first places God start dealing with when you're in walking in disobedience is your money, honey. He's trying to get your attention. This portion of the Bible that says you so much, you so much, you so so much, you reap very little. The reason why you reap so much is because the Bible said God came in and blowed on your increase. You look like you had much, but because of your disobedience, God came in and blew on your increase. How you, how God go blow on your increase? All of a sudden, now you got Dr. Bishop. All of a sudden, uh, you having a car accident and, and, and you having to pay uh, your deductible. If you're not getting sick, somebody else around you getting sick. <laughs> something always, or something at the house breaking down or something like that. When you are going outside of the will of, the, of God, you're going to have to pay. Baby, you're going to have to pay. And the price is always higher than what you want to pay and higher than what you can afford to pay. So basically, that, that's a wake-up call. You first got the call from God. And now that your money is getting fun, wake up, time to wake up. That's your wake-up call. That's your wake-up call. But it amazes me how some people see the wake-up call and still want to go to Tarsha. He said he went down into it to go with them unto Tarsha. Again, it says, from the presence of the Lord. Here we go, fourth verse. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. I'm going to start right there. Because see, a lot of y'all out there, it's under the sound of my voice thinking, oh, no, it's the devil working against me. No, it's not the devil working against you. It's not the devil plotting against you. He plotted against you when he got you to turn your head away from hearing God. And once he got you to do that, the rest was on you. The first time you heard God and decided not, you're not going to do what God told you to do, that fell upon that. The, the enemy has already done his job because the, the rest is on you. It said that the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Oh, my God. That thing that first looked good to you, that thing you thought was so promising, that thing that you thought was going to be the joy of your life, 
it now looked like it broke. God himself sent a wing. God sent the wing. The enemy didn't send it. God sent the wind because you heard God when he said go to Nineveh. You heard God when he when he told you to go to a specific place, a specific person, and you said, no, I'm not going to. The tempest, God, God developed a wind, a strong wind, a tempest to get Jonah's attention, to get you, you, Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. We're talking to you, Jonah, to get your attention. He did this. And now that which looks so good to you in the beginning is looking all jacked up right now. It's looking all broke. And by your own flesh and your own power, you want to try to hold it together, but it's too much. It is too much. And then it says in the fifth verse, it says, then the marinas were afraid. Oh, my God. And cry every man unto his God. For where the cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. So now, so now, you done paid your fare. You, it's done cost you some money. It's done cost you some money. It's done cost you. It has cost you. In most cases, it's going to cost you some time, too, some valuable time. Because while you was running from the presence of the Lord, you could have been doing what God called you to do. So now you don't lost time. You don't lost money. Now, because you want to try to keep everything afloat, you got to throw some stuff overboard, overboard that was valuable to you. Oh, my God. But it wasn't valuable as your life. So you still got to throw some stuff overboard. You got to get rid of some stuff to try to make that boat, what you thought was so perfect, still float. You going down and you still lose. And it's too late now because you done got on the wrong boat. Listen, but Jonah was gone down again into the side of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? That is strange to me. And the reason it's strange to me is because there's been times when I played with Jonah, I couldn't get no sleep. Oh, my God. Is there somebody out there hitting? Is there somebody out there listening to me now? If you have a problem sleeping, it's just like what the – see, I got a little, little bit of old – I got a little bit of – a little bit of age on me. When the Club Purple, they had a song on there that said, you lay awake at night. Something just not right. Maybe. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. I can't see how all that was going on with Jonah. Everybody crying out, and Jonah down there in the bottom of sleep. Sometimes, sometimes God would allow you to become numb to some things. <laughs> Even while you're in danger, feel comfortable and danger's all around you. Could it be that you don't have no fear now because you didn't have no fear of God when God told you to go such and such and so or told you don't do such and such and so, you didn't have no fear of God. And now that you're in danger, you still ain't really got no, you still don't really have no fear. And danger just lurk. People just crying. Now, listen, it says they cried out to every man cried out to his God. And then that, that let me know that every man on there, they had separate gods. They didn't everybody didn't believe in the one the true living God that was like what Jonah had. But he was down there in the bottom of the ship asleep. So the shipmaster came to him. <laughs> Ain't that something? The shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Here we go again. God telling him again, tell him, Rise, arise. He said, Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think 
upon us perish not. Listen. Listen to this. God sent the shipmaster. He's still sending somebody with authority. <laughs> My God. This is good to me, y'all. It's good to me. I'm telling you, he got this downloading this straight off the pipe. I've never seen that like this before. He sent a man of authority to the prophet. The prophet is supposed to be the man of authority, but because he's out of his place, oh, my God, I'm telling you, it's just coming down straight off the pipe because he's out of his place. God using someone else of authority to call the prophet, trying to figure out what's going on with him, just like I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He he said, "What what menace is this, oh, sleeper? Arise and call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us and we perish not. I need you pray, prophet. I need that prophet, that disobedient prophet. I need you to pray. You still might have some kind of connection still left with the God you serve. I need you to pray. By fact, I need everybody on this ship praying. Let me say this, too, like I said before. A lot of times what we don't understand is when we get out of the will of God, we bring not ourselves into danger, but we bring others around us into danger. Had those people known that that Jonah was getting on that ship, running away from God, they wouldn't have let him on that ship. If they had known what was about to happen. Some of us need to be careful. Some of us need to be careful who we allow to get on our ship. If you allow just anybody to get on your ship and they're running from God, you're going to get shipwrecked with them. Yeah, I said that right. Some of us need to be careful about who we let get on our bandwagon. Because there's, there's some of us that, that has an anointing that draws. The anointing will draw. The anointing going to do one or two things with a person. It's either going to draw that person or drive them away. So we need our discernment kicked up. Can't let just any old Jonah get on the boat. Because our boat might get wrecked. My God. He said to him in the seventh verse, see, they didn't want to die. Time everybody's supposed to be praying. But you know, my God. Some people only want to pray for a little while, even though they know they're in danger. No, this is time you're supposed to be doing nothing else but praying. If anything else come around you, you're supposed to be getting away. Shoe fly, shoe fly, shoe fly, shoe fly, shoe. I'm in trouble with God. I ain't got time to talk to you. I got to talk to God and get up out of this mess I done got myself in. I hope you're listening to me. Somebody I done need to listen to me. Every sin and every weight that so easily beset us. God had me minister that one a few weeks ago, too. Anyway, some verses it says, And they said, Everyone to his fellow, come and let us cast light that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast light, and the light fell upon Jonah. Let me tell you this. These guys may not have known the one and true living God, but they knew something about something or some uh, they knew a way about they knew something was causing that evil to come upon them. They might not have known the true and living God, but they knew, hey, there's a reason behind why this doggone ship about to go down. And the Bible says they cast light. Listen, they cast lot, and the lot fell on John. And then they said unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? And whence cometh thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? 
And in the ninth verse, he says to them, this is Jonah talking, he said unto them, I am in Hebrew, fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which have made the sea and the dry land. Stop, Jonah, you lying. <laughs> Part of it is true. Part of it is you are a Hebrew. Mm-hmm. You you know about the things of God. You don't have a relationship with God. You know who God is. You know what God is capable of, but you don't fear God. That's the lie part right there. He said, I fear the Lord. No, if you hadn't feared the Lord, you would have got up when he told you to get up and went to Nineveh. See, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And I see people run in trouble and have problems with God because they just simply don't fear God. They've gotten to the place to where, uh, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord. I know it was wrong. I do. I, forgive, forgive me, Lord. And, and now God has raised them to a place where, hear me, uh-uh, I want repentance now. I want you to turn from that wicked thing that you usually do or normally do or normally say and normally go. I need you to. Be ye holy, for I, your God, am holy. I need you to present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto me. And you can't do that as long as you're still going in the wrong direction, holding on to what I told you not to hold on to, things I told you to let go, the people I told you to let go. If I told you and you're still holding on to them, don't tell me you fear me. You don't fear me. Don't tell me that you trust me. You don't trust me because if you had to trust me, you could have trusted me well enough to let that go. It's not your God. I'm your God. This is God speaking. So, Teddy Pendergrass said, I think I'm about to let it go. It looked like another love TKO. Let it go. I'm talking to God. God talking to my Let it go. Because you're in a storm, and you're in the midst of where your ship is about to be wrecked. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. In the 10th verse, it says, Then were the men exceedingly afraid. Isn't that something? Isn't that strange? How every man had a different God. How every man had a, a idol. But when the true God, with all his power, showed up, everybody can make the difference. Everybody can differentiate and see what's real and what's not real. They were exceedingly afraid. And then they asked him, why, have you, how, why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he had fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. That very thing, that very secret that you kept in your heart, it's going to come out. Mm, mm, mm. For the word of the Lord says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. God got a way of making people confess some stuff. Put you in the right storm. Oh, you go confess some stuff. Stuff you've been lying about for years, months, days. You get in the right storm, you go confess some stuff. Because except you confess, God ain't gonna be able to conf- He ain't gonna be able to he ain't not go he ain't not go forgive. Even to the point that with some of us, our 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 prayers and stuff. Our, our our healing and stuff be held up. That's why he said, confess your faults one to another in order that you may be healed. Some of you got faults and stuff. Once uh, you got it against your brother, there's some stuff you you done some sneaky, tricky, conniving stuff against your brother. You thought your brother didn't see it. Your brother didn't see it, but God saw it. 
and you're trying to figure out why things still going wrong. And it, Job had some friends who spoke wrong about Job. God saw it. God sent the friend and said, listen, you have Job pray for you. If he don't pray for you, I'm not going to bless you. Oh, my God. Let me let me help some of you with this stuff right here, right here, right here. How many times do you get some folks do you wrong, and then they, they, God deal with them? And he's dealing with them hard. He's dealing with them harshly. This go help somebody right here. And even you though you've done them wrong, you go up to them one day, you pat them on the back, and you say, look, bro, look, sis. Oh, my God. Uh, if I did anything to you wrong, I ask you to forgive me. No, 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 no. Yeah, I know. I'm, I know. I didn't speak proper English. I fix it for those who have scholars and degrees and stuff. It's not a thing about if you did. You know you did. Not only did you know you did, you knew what you did. So confess it, so that not, so that you may be healed. If you got to come around talking about you, you coming out crooked and you coming out sideways talking about if I did, when you know what you did, you're not really confessing. You still you still harboring some stuff up in you. And if you can't confess it, then and it's still harboring harboring up in you, then it's it's a good possibility you might let this thing happen again to me. Or someone else you done put the okie doke on. And as long as you come in all crooked and sideways talking about forgive me if I did this and forgive me if I did that and there is no confession, there is no there's not there's not gonna be any healing to take place. His chastening is not gonna lay up on you. For the simple fact you're not willing to reveal truth. Law, I, I knew, I knew, I said the first five, I think I got up to seven, but I knew I wasn't going to get to go as far as I would like to go I, because God just kept on, he just kept, the last time I started dealing with this, he just, I didn't even start dealing with it. I just started, I can't even say I really started reading. I, I did read a little bit, but God, and the more I got into it in the night, the more God just started un, un, uncovering and revealing. So with that, I, it's, my time is up. My time is up. But to God be the glory. If there's somebody out here, uh, out there, under the sound of my voice, I pray this night that that spirit of Jonah loose you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I decree and I pray that that word that you hear this night find a resting place in your heart to break the shackles off of you, to cause you to humble yourself and say, I yield, I yield. I can't hold on much longer, God. What must I do to be saved? God, what must I do to get myself in my right position, in my call with you? What must I do? to function and operate in the things that you're calling me to operate in. God, I pray for that person this night because there's some Jonas out there. It doesn't matter if, you, if you're just not getting into this thing called salvation. It doesn't matter if you've been in 10 years, 5 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. If you know God called you to do a thing and you went the other way, tonight is the night for you to get it right. The Bible said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart in the day of provocation. Don't you harden your heart. Pastor Thomas, bringing it to him, my victory over sin. Uh. Every day we struggle Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ He'll make it happen 